Before the wool is washed, the bales are broken down into smaller pieces. This is scary. me. Can you see the wool going in now? It's been fed evenly into the wool scour now. To wash or scour the wool, it's mixed with water and detergent and passed through three tanks, each one cooler than the last. It's then rinsed in what looks like a medieval torture chamber. Look at that machinery. So the majority of the wool grease is washed out in the first bowl. All right, the first bowl is the hottest bowl, and we wash about 80% of the wool grease will be washed out there. And that's where we'll extract that water from because it's, it's concentrated wool grease there. While the clean wool goes off to be dried, the grease-rich liquid from the first tank is pumped into a series of centrifuges. These spin it at high speeds to separate the grease from the water and any dirt. These are the centrifuges, and we're producing what we know is anhydrous wool grease. Yeah, you can see how clear it is now. It's drying already, yeah? Yeah. Oh, that's really sticky. Yeah. That's like earwax. Yeah. <laughs> well, it is, as we said earlier, it officially is a wax. This isn't lanolin yet. No, no, this is the raw product that we then sell to the refiners. It takes 500 tonnes of fleece to produce five tonnes of wool grease, which is sold on to be refined into lanolin. So when you see lanolin on a label, it means that a version of this oily brown grease with all the dirt and impurities removed is in the product. But just what is it doing there and why is it used in such a wide range of stuff? To find out, it's time for my very own Blue Peter moment, as the girls and I make a moisturiser from scratch. Helping us is Dr Laura Waters from the University of Huddersfield, an expert in making the kind of products we see on the chemist's shelves. Goggles on, girls. Come on, goggles on. Let's see. Goggles on, good to yeah, go. Yeah, good to go. OK, Excellent. come on around. <laughs> Unlike the grease we saw in the factory, the lanolin we're using here has been through the refining process. I'm keen to know what makes it such a desirable ingredient in our cosmetics. What's so special about lanolin is the way it can take up the water. It can mix it in. We call that an emulsifier, and mixes the water in. So when you apply it to your skin, it not only forms a barrier as an oil, but it also has water inside that acts to rehydrate your skin, so it's also a moisturiser. So it's completely unique in that way. There's several other emulsifiers that you can get, but with lanolin, it's a natural product. People trust it. It's gentle. It's safe. And it feels nice on the skin as well. Yes. Even in its yeah. most raw form, yeah. doesn't yeah. it? <laughs> That's really nice to know, actually. So, are we all ready to start mixing? Yes. Yes? Fantastic. First, we heat the lanolin in a beaker and add some petroleum jelly. It's like being back at home economics, isn't it? <laughs> Next, we add emulsifying wax, which helps blend the oil and water in the cream together. OK, and then finally, we need to add our liquid paraffin. Liquid paraffin is a mineral oil that helps soften the skin. So this is just the basis of most creams. It is. And then they add whatever they need to add, like perfumes, mm. colourings or whatever. Sure, yeah, it's the base of most um, moisturisers and barrier creams as well. Once the lanolin mixture has melted, it's time for the most critical part, stirring. Stir, yep. Pour your water in. Oh, it's already got thicker. I can feel it. The texture just changes instantly, doesn't it? Now the moment of truth. Have our homemade moisturisers made the grade? OK, so, so that looks fantastic. That looks really good. It's, a, it's very nicely mixed. So if you were to apply that to your skin, you'd find it, it, it would hydrate your skin very, very nicely.